Hi, everybody. It's Scope oh. Check number four. Scope wow. Check four. number four. Happy yeah. May 5th. Uh, we're here to uh, dive in. For those that are tuning in for the first time, the whole idea behind this is we are going to make a fast, casual game. We're working with the community and ourselves to do it, and we're seeing if we can knock this thing out in roughly eight weeks. Uh, hi, I'm Thomas Winkley. I work here as a technical marketing advocate on the education team. And as always, I'm joined by the illustrious... Joy. Hello, it's me. I am Joy. I also work here. I am a senior instructional designer on the Learn team. That is me. But what is Utsav? Ooh, what's up? What's up is me. I am Utsav. Nice to meet you guys again. Uh, I'm the technical product manager in the education team, working with Thomas and Joy, making games. Yeah. Making games. Making games. Being friends. Mm -hmm. It's all a great making, adventure. Making games with friends. I wish this was my full time job. That'd be kind of fun, right? I mean, it's part of your full-time job because we're doing this thing. True, um, true. But, you know, we all do have other full-time jobs here at Unity, whether we're making instructional content or developing education product and or getting on the internet and yelling about the instructional content and the education product. <laughs> you know, we all have stuff we have to do here. So we're trying to have this fun thing where we talk to you about it. And the whole context of this is from the scope of making games and education, learning, right? So... Some of the solutions we're going to make might be a little quick, might be a little dirty. We're not always looking at like, hey, this is 100,000% the optimal way to do it. It's the optimal way for what we're building, and uh, we're having a good time doing it. So hope you're having a good time in the chat. Say hello. Oh, no, the Unity admin just didn't, doesn't get paid. I'm so sorry, Mod. <laughs> chat. Um, he gets paid in love. He gets paid in love, yeah. So, so by the way, big shout outs to our mods and all the folks that have been here since day one. Big shout out to my man CF Hemi in the chat. You'll be hearing something about him in a minute. I'm excited to drop that on you all. Oh yeah, we're here to do this thing. So let's jump right off and open up with the thing we have to do every episode, which is a uh, scope check. Scope, scope check. check. Scope so check. Let me just get this document up here. Um, if those want to see our current game design doc, I can actually drop a link in the chat. Um, it's right there. So here's our premise, right? We're building this game. Uh, I. I called this beat snack high i don't know if that's actually the name of the school but for now that's what it is zombies are hungry and monsters are hungry they show up to the cafeteria demanding food and if you don't feed them they're going to eat you instead right so think smash tv kind of top down uh, isometric with monsters coming at you and you're eating food at their faces um we talked about multiplayer we are going to make this two-player cooperative and we are going to do net code and we'll talk about Yay. some more of that here in a Ooh, minute exciting and we have taken into consideration the feedback from uh, chat last week. We we're going to do more coding this week. Um, also, hi, YouTube chat. We know you're here, too, and we love you. Thank you for watching. Like, um, oh, it's YouTube and Twitch. Yeah, we got YouTube and Twitch going live. <laughs> this is the moment that we realized <laughs> that there's 50% more audience. <laughs> um, so we've got some inspiration linked here in our doc. Um, we've got our basic gameplay loop here, right? So we've got our title screen, which will be its own scene. Then it's going to load. And actually, for integrating that code, I think that's the best approach. Um, because there's going to have to be a time when the net code does the net code stuff. And I think like having it happen during like on scene load is actually a great time for that. Like, hey, once we've gotten all of our player stuff connected, boom, jump in, establish the host, establish the client. Anyway, yeah. I've been doing a lot of net code research this week, so that's all I want to talk about. Net code. Um, so we'll have a combat phase. You have ammo refills. You feed the monsters. When your health is less than or equal to zero, you die. And then you either restart and start over or you quit and go back to the main menu. That's pretty much... The whole thing that's the loop uh so uh for quick updates um we have an artist who is going to be making us some animations for our existing kenny characters uh they are also going to be creating us a our heroes and that's awesome so we'll get into that they i believe get to start on that next week or the week after so we'll definitely cover that once that's there it's gonna be part of the polish uh but we have zombies vampires and skeletons uh, weapons are going to be tacos, hot dogs, pies, and sandwiches, and then pizza is going to be a bomb. This is the view. Cool. We've reviewed everything. We're good. So, but the scope check part, based on this week's work of coding, how we all feeling about the scope? We going to get this? I think we're in a good place. I think we got it. Like, this feels like halfway through a project, which yeah. is great because we're halfway through our <laughs> stream. Yes. Yeah, this right. is actually the halfway point. No, I, I think we were just talking about it earlier. I feel pretty good about it. Thank you, Thomas, for doing the netcode research because I think yes. all of us are new to netcode and that would have taken some time. Uh, but, you know, other things, I feel pretty good. feel pretty good. Yeah. So 
yeah, I'm excited. Um, yeah, I agree. I agree with what you're saying. I think we're in a good place. Like we mentioned in our meeting before this, like, I feel like we are doing good. We're making it. We're doing yeah, the thing. Yeah. Um, we're doing it, guys. We're doing it, guys. There is something that I keep telling myself I want to show the chat and I keep forgetting. I actually made us a Kanban board on Airtable and shared it with everybody and I have it all laid out. And now I don't have a link to it on my streaming machine, so oh, I can't no. get to it. So we'll have to figure that out. But yeah, I'm stoked. We're doing the thing. <laughs> so um, I'll figure out a way to do that. We did publish our design docs. So uh, our technical design doc will be the next thing we're going to look at. And I can look at it like this. HTTPS. ly slash scope check TDD. And that'll take us right to this published technical design doc that we are updating. So you'll see them. So you'll notice I already got rid of the uh, to do's for next week. And uh, we'll go to see what we're looking at. So this week, um, Asav, you worked on interactions and throwing right. food. Right, I did, I did. So, you know, I'm just going to quickly walk through it, added an input action for interact, added an input action for throw, coded that out, didn't take very long. I was trying something cheeky, uh, trying to make the character aim, but I ran out of some time. So maybe that's something I'll try another time. Uh, but yeah, um, that's, that's, that's basically what I did. And it looks good, right? We've got our on throw action added to the player controller. Um, so you see here, you've got your pizza to throw. Right now, we'll probably work on those names. We're going to be toggling through food. Um, but right now, it's a pizza you grab, and you actually grab it out of a pizza oven. Um, and that is how we kind of move things forward that way. Let's see. Ooh, okay. And currently, Itzov is locked out of Parsec, so we might need to reconnect him really fast. So, <laughs> Wait, I should um, check too. Yeah, you should check as well to see if you can move it. Can, can Joy's good. I? Okay, so it's just itself. It's just me. Okay, let me real quick <laughs> scope check moment. Let's see if we can get him connected. Whoop. All right, so I'm still on the mouse back. Okay, I'll be good. Uh, so we got to fight for the mouse for a second. Uh, oh yeah, maybe I should actually give you keyboard and mouse permissions. All right, you should be good now. Oh, he doesn't right. need that. I don't the need the power it. of your mind alone. Utsav, <laughs> move parts <laughs> of screens. There's only so much power I have, you know? Yep. <laughs> so yeah, if you want to, like, we can quickly run through your code of what you added. So I noticed you have an is interactable bool. Yeah, so what I did is I'm going to just walk through what I added. I added placeholder game objects because when I wrote this code, we were still, Joy was still working through adding some ammo pieces. So I just wanted to check it out, make sure everything worked great. So I added those two game objects that I just assigned in the scene right now. But we'll create, we have a whole and uh you know design for what we're gonna do there and then i create a list for you know you can have multiple ammo uh types and and different food types so i created a list for that um i created an is interactable because we don't want you to be able to just press a button anywhere you want to get anything um yeah so cool what do we add, what do i do here i i check that are we are we in front of a stall, are we hitting the stall? Once we're near the stall, uh, you can actually interact. And what does interact do? Interact instantiates for now. This is for now. Again, we're going to change yeah. this today. Once we set up the scriptable objects for food, we're going to change yep. this where it becomes a dictionary. And I just keep a keep a list of that. Then I add that to a list. Just wanted to check it out. Uh, make sure that uh, <laughs> the the food is actually with the player and not just yep. stuck on the <laughs> on the stall. That would be that would be pretty crazy. Uh, I make sure you can't see it. Uh, I think in, in your code, Thomas, right now, maybe you can't see it, but but anyway. And then throw. Throw is pretty straightforward. I just get the rigid body. I shoot it forward with the throw force that you can change in the editor, in the inspector. Um, and then I turn the is interactable off uh, before you go back to the stall and, and do that. And then if you see fixed update, I want to make sure that the, that the food is updated as and when you go. So can I go back to Unity here? Oh, yeah, cool. Um, so just quickly going through actions, you know, here you can see interact, you press F on the keyboard, throw, uh, it's X. I think this is, this was already there as shooter or, or some other action in the default action. So I just kind of changed it up a little bit. No, nothing crazy. And then I'm going to go back to our character. Um, if you see here, do, do, do. Yeah, so these are the placeholder game objects. Uh, and then the throw force. I, I tried 1,000th uh, throw force one time, <laughs> and the pizza was like somewhere crazy in the world. Well, um, yeah. <laughs> it was fun. It was fun. I wanted to try some stuff out. But but th that was kind of all I did. It, it didn't take me a long time. But like I said, I was trying to check out if I could maybe do an aim, uh, see how that goes. But then I realized we're in isometric view, so I'm going to have to do some vector math to figure that one out. 
Now, Utsev, uh, the, uh, the Twitch chat ha has pointed out something very interesting about your scripts. Oh. If you could just, you know, go back in. Um... Almost help me. Oh, yeah, that's right. We still have to deal with that. <laughs> Okay, there we go. So, Mr. Mr. Detailed Variable Names. Yes. Um, the Twitch chat has a question. Yes. Where is it? And, okay. um, you know, it's funny because they're right here in the uh, on throw method. Uh huh. What's go? What is that describing? <laughs> Game object. That's a, that's a local variable, uh, which clearly kind of you know just gets a game object uh, uh -huh. th it's the same as a rigid body come on we we've all we've all done rb and go don't tell me yeah. you've never done go yeah oh no i do it all the time <laughs> but remember i seem to recall mr descriptive variables at all time chat <laughs> yes but this is placeholder code <laughs> <laughs> fair fair uh, hey, I just wanted to draw attention to that because the Twitch chat was lighting up about the fact that listen, somebody Twitch was fact being... is right. Twitch, Twitch chat is right. But, but, placeholder code, you know, I'm, I'm just getting stuff vague done. Coding. Just vague coding. We see how it is. <laughs> cool. So that's, we'll get that variable name, you know, tweaked out or figured out. But otherwise, that looks good and it works. We've seen it. Uh, mm -hmm. We haven't seen it fully tested yet, but. But um, I guess, should we hit play and show it running real quick? And then, because oh, yeah. I feel like what's going to happen next is I'll show the wave thing really quick. And then we'll jump into Joy's code because yep. Joy, your code is the code we're actually going to extend today, right? We're going to yeah. get access to it and everything. So, mm -hmm. yeah. All right. So zombies be spawning. Notice only four zombies spawn and it stops. I'll talk about why here in a second. And then he can pick up a pizza. Yep. I have Whoosh. to go to the pizza stall. Press F. We have the pizza. Throw the pizza. Run! Throw the pizza. Run! And then ah! reference to zombies. <laughs> This is so fun to I play I can throw already. a pizza at that velocity. Hey, I can increase the velocity too if you want, you know. Give you give this you like so a I better aspirational. What if we give the pizza like like physics simulation, like 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 soft body simulation? Is that the way I describe it? So you throw the pizza and it's like <laughs> Yeah. Should we maybe I can try it. Let me try. Okay. Anyway, that that's a that's a scope creep, but it'd be super sick. So that's pretty much where we're at game wise right now, right? So we have a we still don't have a gameplay loop, but we have functions and features. Kind of being added, kind of being thrown, and we're kind of just tackling it that way, and that's how it's working. So with that, I'll jump into what I did. So I was responsible for working on waves. Oh, we had a really, really great question. Uh, somebody asked, why don't we use underscore prefix for local variables? Um, I generally don't use an underscore prefix for anything. It's a preference thing. I think, yeah, like, when I was learning a lot of this, I, it was... It was put to me that the underscore is a C sharp standard from back in the day and that it's not as common. So I just never did it. Uh, I think it's really just a preference thing for us. Uh, anyone else thoughts? Young I mean, and vivacious programmers it, don't use underscores. It is kind of helpful to, to change stuff out, but it's not necessary, I don't think. Gotcha. Yeah. Oh. Quite also, yeah. I love the uh, I love the placeholder code discussion. All my code is placeholder code. You know, yeah, it's a very nihilistic view of life. <laughs> That's a vibe, though. All right. So what I worked on um, this week was the waves. Oh, and we'll talk about netcode after, and then dive into code. I think that. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Anyway, so so what I worked on was waves. So pretty straightforward, right? So we have a wave. We have a wave manager. Uh, there is this scriptable object here that needs to get deleted, um, and the reason for that is. I started looking at using scriptable objects to define waves. Um, the issue we ran into, uh, I ran into, was that would mean that we would want to be defining every single wave as like a designer, right? So like, this is how this thing connects. This is how this works here. And I was like, well, yeah, if we were, if I had a designer building each wave for me, I would absolutely want to do that. But thinking about it from the scope of, hey, we're trying to get like a vertical slice done, right? Like a proof of concept. We can just basically programmatically generate our waves and just let it kind of continue and heat up. And I think that's just an easier way, right? So that we can just continue going wave to wave until our player loses. Right. Um, and so I actually went back to our composition idea of like, well, I'm just going to have a wave object that stores the data I need. And then I'm going to have a wave manager that just populates that data and triggers function within the wave and we're good. So uh, you can see I've got my wave manager here. There's a wave script attached to it. And then there's the wave manager itself that has a reference to the uh, that has a reference to itself. 
doesn't seem right to me. I think that's supposed to be the wave. I think it is, yes. Oh, it is. It's the wave manager dot wave. <laughs> okay. It's okay. Let's... It's Friday morning. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to go ahead and edit this. If we look at the wave, it's pretty straightforward, right? So we've got an enemy count. That's how many enemies are going to be in the scene or how many enemies this wave will ha contain. We'll have the time, how long the wave lasts, uh, which we are currently not accessing or using. We'll have the wave number. What number of wave is this? Uh, the max number of enemies that can spawn be spawned at one time during the wave. Um, and then we have wave complete. Yes or no? Is it complete? Um, and then we have how many enemies are currently spawned. So this is literally how many enemies have been spawned so far in this wave, right? And when that hits our maximum amount, the wave is then complete. Um, so we have our init first wave. Uh, this is just our default. I, I hard coded these values. These are, in fact magic numbers um magic numbers so we'll want to take that uh really quick one i gotta gotta pull a trigger uh, okay good shot so uh from here we have to our magic numbers right so we have our starting enemy count 10 wave number is one uh wave time is 60 all that stuff so and then the wave of course is not complete and then we have a progress wave which just moves everything forward again these are arbitrary arbitrary values right so we're going to do plus equals five. Uh, so we'll add more five more enemies. We'll incre increment the wave number. Uh, we'll add how many max enemies can be spawned by four. And then we'll set wave complete to false. And then I just was like, you know what? Every third wave or every time the wave is divisible by three, we're going to add 30 seconds to the wave time because that seems like an appropriate balance. We can play with those numbers, but just mm -hmm. for a basic prototype layout. Uh, and then basically we just add enemies to the wave count. Um, so we just increment that and then check to see if it's bigger than that we can. If so, the wave's complete. And then we can reset the wave count to zero when we restart the game. That was pretty much everything here. And then the wave manager is super straightforward. Uh, so we have a wave state of pre-wave and running. That's all we need. Are we bef between a wave or is there a wave happening? Uh, and then we have our um, delegate here to deal with that. Um, and then we have our reference to the wave. Um, then in start, we're getting our handle wave changes being assigned to the delegate. And then we are invoking that to start off on the pre-wave. Uh, the reason I'm doing that is if we go down to handle wave change, it's doing a couple things. So handle wave change is basically saying, hey, take the state in, uh, debug it just so I know what happened. And then basically stop, if it's pre-wave, stop spawning, which is just a thing that'll stop the coroutine running if it's running. Uh, then if the wave number equals zero, we're going to initialize the first wave. Otherwise, we're going to increment the wave and progress it forward. And then once we get to the end of that, we're going to set the wave state to running. And then we're going to invoke the method with the wave state so that it goes through this process again, where then it will fall to wave state dot running and we'll start the code routine. That's pretty much the whole thing. And then of course on destroy, we're getting rid of that handle wave change description. So there's no weirdness. Um, that's it. That's the waves. So, you know, 25, what 50, 60 lines of code, all pretty basic. And I like to write my code very spaced out. So it's probably more like 25 lines of code. I just Looking like spaces. good, good, good hey. code. Thanks. Good, good. Um, and just to see this functioning, to show you all how it works, we'll hit play really quick. We'll go to the game mode. So we're going to see the four zombies spawn. And just to test it, if we go to our wave, uh, our spawn manager. Yeah, so we have this enemies in scene here. So if I just remove an item from the list, you'll see another enemy immediately spawn. And it will spawn Yay. at the next spot. So we're not destroying enemies, right? But once I get, notice that once I get past that number of 10, the list just decrements and no new enemies spawn. So we do have our maximum 10 in the scene. So that's how we know it's working. Neat. All right, Joy, it is your turn Me. to do your code review and then we're gonna start live coding your stuff, I think, right? Yep, yep, yep. Okay, okay. so um, I had the easy job this week. I'm at a bunch of scriptable objects and scriptable objects make me very happy. So we're gonna first take a look at the scratchable objects folder. So um, what I was tasked with this week was setting up our ammo. And you can see that we have all of these set up right here. I will go over them in a minute. But first, I want to talk about base scriptable object. So I'm going to open up our ammo scriptable object. And I am going to increase the size of the parsec window so I could see everything. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm like, why is it cut off? I don't understand. Okay, so uh, if you aren't familiar, um, scriptable objects are great. They're basically just like super fancy data containers yep. um, and they are extremely useful for developing things in Unity. They are 
pretty much like the same to write as any um, like regular script. You'll notice that we have changed things up here by declaring it as a scriptable object. And then to make life easy so we could actually create these easily, I uh, created a asset menu thing yep. um, called MO scriptable object and then the menu name. So we'll see that in a second. But anyway, that, that's all it takes to make a fancy scriptable object. Inside the scriptable object, we have a food type dropdown. So you could select the type of ammo. Um, and this is really cool because if we decide later on that we want to have more ammo types, then we could just easily add them here. Yep. Um, then we are obviously publicly declaring what type. We are adding in the prefab for the food, the damage value, and the max ammo amount. So remember that these are um, kind of like the top level concepts of ammo rather than an ammo instance itself. Right. And so this ammo piece is going to declare how much of the food type the player is going to be able to hold at any one time. And this is actually going to bring us to a very important conversation that we need the chat's help with, which is the relative damage value and heaviness value of food. So we'll get to that in a second. Um, but that's really all there is. Like, scriptable objects, super simple, yep. super straightforward. So now let's go back into Unity and see how this is implemented. Cool. So here's our ammo. We've got our, let's start with our hot dog. So what we saw in Visual Studio is what we see over here in the inspector. So we've got our food type dropdown. We've got our food mesh. I've created prefabs. We'll, we'll jump over to those really quickly. And then we have our damage value and our max amount. Um, so I'll go over to the hot dog and we could see, yeah. Oh, that's, that's a good looking, look at that, look at that Frankfurter. <laughs> look at that dog. Mm. Look at that dog. It is that dog. Hot. That dog it's is hot. hot. It's hot. <laughs> uh, uh, real, real quick, yeah. uh, someone asked in the chat, why are you doing a private variable serialized instead of just making it a public variable uh, in the so scriptable object definition? Because private is safer. Um, yeah, really what it comes down to is that unless you want uh, the script to be, ex or the variables within a script to be accessible from other scripts, yep. uh, it's always better practice to just like tuck them away and make sure yep. that they are only accessible within. And their even own if script. you want them to be accessible from other scripts, oh, getter, you might want to do setters. a getter yeah. setter instead yeah. of a public mm -hmm. variable. Very rarely do you need public variables, I think. It's now, this basically, is... yeah, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, you're good. So somebody in chat just said, but they're all private. How are we going to have access to those variables? And you just answered the question as you said it. So that's it. Yeah. I just wanted to call out that chat yeah. comment. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> ultimately, um, it, this is just us practicing good, you know, code cleanliness. Um, yeah. But when you're working on a much larger team uh, where there are a lot of programmers, basically making all your variables private is protection against other people who might not know how your code works, right? Yeah. So you don't want people arbitrarily accessing things that may damage stuff. So if you make everything yep. private and just do getters and setters, people will only be able to interact with your code the way that you want them to. Exactly. So yeah. that's good. Yeah. Um, so ammo, we have five type, is that how the math works? Yeah, <laughs> I can yeah. count. <laughs> One, two, three, four, yeah, all right, cool. <laughs> So we have five different types of ammo. That's hot dog, pie, pizza, sandwich, and taco. And this is extremely important. Which food causes the most damage? Well, pizza yeah. is a bomb. So, you know, <laughs> yeah. that's true. Like, so pizza goes like... floaty. So it's like not pizza slices here. Full pizzas. Yeah. So keep that in mind. But pies have that tin. Mm. Mm. All right. So what if, what if, what if because pizza, because the way the pizza functions, the way I want the pizza to function, if I'm being real, <laughs> is I want us to throw a whole pizza. I want the pizza to detonate. I want there to be mm -hmm. fire. And then mm -hmm. I want pizza slices to shoot away like rockets, like a scatter bomb. You're just yeah. describing dinner at D&D &D every Saturday night for me. So <laughs> right. I'm not sure how this is any different than a normal pizza. <laughs> so because of that, I think the pizza overall should do more damage, mm -hmm. but it should be smaller damage per piece. So that's what I was wondering. Would you want pizza? So pizza hits, let's say, enemy A, right? Mm -hmm. And then how much damage does it do to enemy A? And then how much damage do slices do to, to other enemies? Yeah. So that is a great point. And hey here's a great opportunity so note that i only have the full pizza 
scriptable object ammo type right now. We don't have slices. Why don't we do that right now? Let's make slices. Let's make a slice. Let's make a That's slice, guys. Hey, dog. Let's make slices. All right. Yo, slice dog. up some pizza. Like vertical so, slices? I had to say that. Mm. Uh, pizzas are right, horizontal so show slices. Show me how to vertically s <laughs> put up a vertical slice of pizza. So the first step is you need a Chicago style pizza. Oh, mm, so you just want a mess. <laughs> you know what? No, 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 no. I'm just, I'm gonna just do this really quick. So oh, right here, so I'm gonna go to create. Um, like I mentioned before, to create scriptable objects, you could add in this menu. Here we go. So I have scriptable objects, create ammo. So I'm gonna do that. We're gonna call this pizza slice ammo. Here we go. And ah, we need to add, well, no, we do. We need to add in the pizza slice as an option. So I'm gonna go back into scriptable object. I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna add this as pizza slice. Uh, should Save we that. write, since we're here, should we write getters and setters for these fields since we're already editing code or should we do that later? Uh, let's finish this thought because otherwise cool. we might forget about the slice. We will come back. Yeah. Okay, deal, we go. deal. Um, Oh yeah, this is, like what am I doing? So pizza slice, come in here. We are going to add a pizza slice. We will add the food mesh in a second and we'll just put in some base damage values. So um, let's just say three for right now. We can you know, talk about what yep. the actual value is. Uh, how many? So there's actually well, no max ammo amount for pizza yeah. slice because pizza slice is going to be just, a, it's going to be part of the pizza. Yeah, so should yeah. we maybe think about pizza slices like each pizza can have X amount of slices and you, we are not defining ammo ourselves. It's predefined. Maybe. Let's let's hold off on this really quick and just finish the cycle and then we can yep. talk about it because yep. we got to get yep. that yep. mesh in. Yep. Yep. So let's go ahead and find our food. Um, and... So... I think what you'll need to do here, if you hit down on the pizza, if you expand the pizza, hit down on the pizza, it's got the slices. It's got the slices. Okay. <laughs> so let's just uh, boink, and then we'll just go boink. And then, oh, right, because it's a prefab. Yeah, so you have to go into prefab editor. <laughs> Someone in the chat saying this conversation is surreal. Trust me, every day we talk <laughs> about this project, I'm like, I don't understand. <laughs> but this is what we're doing. This is me being a chaos agent and breaking all mm. the rules. Don't mind me. I mean, did you just unpack our prefab? Just one, just an instance. Oh, okay. Okay. okay, okay, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. There's still the original prefab, Thomas. Come on. All right. All right yeah, all right, look, all right, it's right, right there. Right. It's fine. We're fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> it's, fine. It's, it's fine. All right. So we've uh, let's go ahead and add in our pizza slice. So now it is a prefab. I am going to get rid of the one there. I'm going to go in here and we are going to give it a a uh, rigid body and a, oh, uh, are we doing no gravity, right? No gravity. Yeah. And yeah. On, yeah. So it just needs like a, I don't even know if it's a rigid body. It's a collider. Yeah. I think with my projectile movement, I'm just using transform dot forward, which could be an issue. No, I'm setting a velocity. I don't remember. We'll yeah. Cause I, I thought we had this conversation about like, well, it could be real, real quick. It doesn't oh, wait, I was we'll, we'll doing the out. projectile in the controller. Yeah. And isn't it? Are you applying a rigid body to the controller or to the the food or is it just I, I have it on it? there but I okay. can but I also have a collider in there. Okay. So uh, yeah, do a rigid body then. Sorry. I realized yeah, that I wrote a move forward script, but that's not what's actually happening because Itsav is now taking over that. So I'm just gonna be quiet. Do we want a box collider or a mesh collider on this? No, no mesh colliders, come on. Come on. No. Come on. No. Oh, we can do a box. Yeah. Listen, honestly, uh, I'm just no, dis no. I'm just disappointed oh, that just double click and it should <laughs> there you go. Okay. Oh, sorry. Is I'm just me? disappointed that there's not a pizza collider, to be honest. Like, I mean, I guess that would be the mesh collider, but yeah, it would be. I mean, we we'll, can we'll do a mesh collider. It's just, it just feels bad to do a mesh collider. What about yeah, a capsule? We can make custom colliders, but capsule yeah. collider would be. Well, yeah. Uh, I guess we can do mesh because it is a slice. Like, ah, uh, yeah, we should do mesh. Just, it's just, I just hate do a it. Mesh. Yeah, I know it's not optimal, but. Yeah, I mean, yeah. this mesh only has yeah. like six or eight faces. I think we're fine, <laughs> you know. Like, oh, actually, it, it did it pretty efficiently too. Okay. Yeah, we, like it's really it's clean. That's really really nice. All right, we got a we got a pizza slice here. Let's go ahead I and bet. close the loop on our uh, scriptable objects. We're ammoed. We're done. That pizza slice. There it is, guys. We made a new oh. piece of ammo. Look at that. 
in like minutes, right? I mean, that took five minutes and we did. That's why scriptable objects can be so powerful because yeah. we can just like roll through them. Um, I want to jump on a quick chat thing. Someone said, what are you doing here? So we're building a game in eight sessions uh, kind of with the community. It's all about building a vertical slice and just having a good time from the perspective of education. And so we're building a game that's a little bit chaotic. But the other episodes are on YouTube as VODs. They're also on learn.unity.com and you can watch them to catch up if you want to. But we're glad you're here. Okay. So all right. go for it. We got our ammo. We are, we are off to the races and ready to go. Okay. So that being said, our next debate, should we dive into, I think we should have the netcode discussion at the end of the show. Um, I think that makes more sense flow wise as I'm thinking about it. Uh, apologies to production. My brain is just kind of making audibles. Um, but I do think we need to figure out how we're going to store this food, right? Because the way it's off is doing this or the way you're doing this. It, well, you're it's off and you're the person doing this. Yeah. I don't that know why that me. was so hard it's for me to me. say his words. Um, yeah, is you have this throw mechanic and you wanted to put a toggle in where we can toggle between different buckets of ammo, right? That's how I'm thinking about it, but I'm open to different ways of doing it. I just figured it would be easier to just kind of toggle through different ammos that the player already has. And then just whichever ammo you're on, that's the one you're shooting. Yeah, I, I like that. And I, I think it makes it's not too hard to implement and it adds like a nice... Cause then we can have different so somebody mentioned this before like different food stations around right and they were yeah. like well you could get different pieces of pizza then bake the pizza well it's not going to be that it'll be like oh i need to get i only have tacos and i want hot dogs and so you're gonna have to like dodge monsters to get to the hot dog stand to get the hot dogs right and then check yeah. them so yeah. i think that makes it a little more fun as you run out of different ammo types yeah um and it's not a heavy lift well so. i guess for me the question would be what keeps our player from always just going for one ammo type the different values like think about it this way if you're like if you get uh, spawned next to the hot dog cart and you only have like hot dogs which have a damage value of, for the sake of this argument, one, but you know that the pizza has a damage of 15, you're going to want to go over to the pizza because that's going to give you more bang for your buck, right? You're going to yep. clear more zombos and skellies by yeah. uh, throwing pizza at them. The, but then yeah. the pizza stall should be further away so that, uh, you know, getting to pizza is harder, you know, harder, harder to get pizza, you know, the, the better damage you do. So, well, yeah. yes and no, though, because we're also going to limit how much pizza you can have in your pocket. Right. That's true. Right. Yeah. And yeah. so it's going to be more dangerous to rip pizza out of your pocket and eat it and then try to go back and reload. I also agree with Spartan fan that pizza stands are going to need like a refill time mm -hmm. like it can't Absolutely. be like an instant refill otherwise you're just gonna like yeet grab yeet grab yeet grab yeet grab right yeet, that's grab. what i was yeah, thinking yeah. there you go that's another reason why so yep, that's, that's gonna that's encourage good. the users yep that's good cool okay all right so we can add we'll add that to the design doc somehow we'll get that going we'll get that fixed um because yes i do believe we need a cool down period uh what i want to jump into though is we talked about how are we going to store these food types right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um and i think the uh yeah see jason gets it the old yeet grab mechanic yeah like it's <laughs> that's an in, that's in every game design book there is every the yeet single grab. one yeah. yeah um so what I was thinking is we well, what we were thinking is we were talking actually not what I was thinking we were all thinking it together collectively because we are one hive mind um, if y'all didn't know that <laughs> we woke um, like one yeah it was a very expensive procedure but luckily we were able to do it at Sears before they closed <laughs> it was worth it um, yeah it's irreversible irreversible yeah we just we just know now we just know um, so what we should do is we were thinking of using a dictionary to keep mm -hmm. all this stuff together and the reason for that is because this dictionary is basically oh my eye is itching sorry y'all this dictionary is basically like a it's a key value pair right and it, you can only have one key per object and so we could basically have the inventory be a set of key value pairs and the key is what type of food it is and the value is the integer of what they're what they have right because we're going to use object pooling right. and so we don't need to store like an array or a list of objects for them to have we can just say they have two they have three they have four whatever it is and then we can just decrement that key value pair and when it's at zero they have to go reload and then we'll let them work anymore yep, yeah yep. hence the placeholder code <laughs> Exactly. So, do we want to create an inventory system? Let's do it. Let's do it live. All right. Let's do it live. Do it live. Uh, so, because words. this is going to be attached to characters, it should go in the characters folder, yes? Yes. Yes. Yep. <laughs> yes. I had to okay. think for a minute, but yes. Because yep. it is food-related, but it's food that the character has. 
Yeah. I mean, um, inventory is a player system, right? Like, invent yep. a player has the inventory, so... Yep. Uh, are we okay with it just being called inventory, or do we want to add in an extra... Food, in food, food inventory? Or, or ammo? Okay. Yeah. Ammo, ammo inventory. inventory. Ammo inventory, I think, is a good name for it. Just so we know what type of inventory it is, in case we add... More inventory. Oh, okay. Th thank you, Unity. That was alarming. <laughs> yeah, I was... I don't know. We'll be back now. Okay, good. So we got our ammo inventory, and we got our boilerplate code here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I am going to just clear everything out so I can think. So the first thing that we're going to start with is uh, our dictionary. So... Uh, oh, God. I'm going to have to... Let's see. Um, All right, so you got to so get a key value. Power, is going to be the key is going to be a string and the value is going to be an int. Yeah. We can do. Can you do food type as as the key value? Can we just pass an enum in? Uh, so we'll have to access the well. I think you can just type. Do it that way? I think uh, you yeah, can food. just just type food type and see what happens. Yeah. Oh, well, but the food type is defined, food. and that's that's defined inside the scriptable object. Yeah. 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 Hmm. Yeah, I think enum is a key is a bad idea. I do think string is our answer here. So, there's another Ooh. thing we could do is like take a instance of so in this, and then nah, now nah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, and then int int. Uh... I was just declaring it. You just need to do the type because this yeah. is initial. The string the comma int, I think. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh yeah. yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're I know. Right. I get brain freeze when I'm doing this live on stream, too. I couldn't even do a getter setter last time. I know. <laughs> uh, and then equals... Wait, do we declare it as... Do we... Do we... Or do we just end... Oh, you need to give it a name, I think, now? Oh, my God. Yeah. I know. Yeah, yeah, name it. So now name it. So now name it. <laughs> Uh, do we want to call it ammo inventory again? That'll confuse things, or what do we want to call this? Yeah, uh, ammo dictionary. Ammo dictionary. Yeah, I think that's a great way so we know Ooh. what it is. I think the Man. name goes after the type. Yeah, isn't it, isn't it private dictionary string and ammo dictionary? Yep. Oh. Yeah. Man, guys, why is live coding hard? Yo, I'm <laughs> telling you, as soon as you put a, as yeah. soon as you put a camera on people and on us, <laughs> it's just like fire like everything burns up i know um so hey, do we hey need guys, to we're, we're writing in javascript right yeah <laughs> function yeah uh so equals i thought this was python right we're just using um all right oh, so man. private dictionary it's, string no, it's, it's it's pymel where are we ah. equals new ammo dictionary right string it um right yeah do we need to new yeah. dictionary yeah, string yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. it's like declaring a new list yep yep boom okay we're good cool we did we, it. We did it. <laughs> We're good. We're good at these things. Okay. Cool. Okay. So now we have our key value pair. Um, we've declared it. It exists. The instantiation's happening. Uh, Ooh, we got a raid, guys. Yo! Thirty D, forty three raid. Thank you. We appreciate you. Yeah. Um, Sinka, hopefully knew we were joking. This is this is not Python. Um, <laughs> this is C sharp. Um, okay. Okay. Oh, we did that. Next? So next, we need to we need to we need to be able to get the dictionary. We need a we need a getter, right? We need to get this dictionary because it's private yep, right now, right? Yep. yep. Um. <laughs> so sorry. please, yes. Please write a method to get this. <laughs> I'm taking over uh, coding. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right. So, do we just do a function, right? Do a short. Should we just like get? Should we just get ammo dictionary? Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> writing right. function in a C sharp script right. is just funny for some reason right now. <laughs> I'm sorry, what are we doing? Uh, Somebody public. help us the line. <laughs> I, I got it, I got it. I'm here. I'm coming in. Parsec for the rescue. Uh public void. What should we call it? Should we call it like get ammo dictionary? Or should we call should we get ammo dict? Get ammo dict. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, yep. no, but that, that didn't return a void, a though. It's got to return something. Because void means it doesn't return anything. So yeah, it's, it's got to return, return a dictionary. dictionary. Yep. Yeah. Of a key value pair, right? We have to do this. There we go. And then we're just going to say. Oh, yeah. There we go. Oh. My okay. goodness. <laughs> All right. 
that's really all we need, right? And honestly, like, couldn't we just do... Like, instead of doing all this, couldn't we have just done Get Set? No, Wait. because it's... What do we? No, we'd have to make a public accessor if we're going to declare it. Couldn't we just... All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get weird here. What if we just okay. did this? What if we just did this? Hmm... Okay, now hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <gasps> We're gonna get wild. We're gonna get wild. We're gonna get wild. Are you just gonna instantiate things or add things in the inspector? Oh, because we're instantiating is? it. Never mind. Never mind. That breaks my whole idea. Never mind. Forget me. So I was thinking that we could just do get private set, mm -hmm. um, but then we'd have to set it in the start method, right? Mm -hmm. I think we're good. Well, no. Okay. So let's... it has to be a dynamic dictionary, though, right? Because you're reloading ammo, so you can do it in yeah. start. Yeah, 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 I think we're good here. I think everything's good here because then we're yeah. just going to add stuff to it, right? And yeah, then we're cause... just going to basically be like, then we're basically going to be like, we'll have a public uh, void this time. Actually, no, we'll do a bool on this just to make sure we can check if it worked. And we'll just do um, add to add ammo to dipped, right? And it'll take in. A key value pair yes but it's returning a bool yeah how's yeah it so that way if the if we can do like if this doesn't allow it to add we know something's wrong just so we can check oh just okay. as like a check see, like hey it. if mm -hmm. this doesn't work we can throw stuff in here um yeah you, oh you can use a property with an assignment see so maybe we could just do that and then it'll save us all this headache yeah twitch chat gpt back in business <laughs> twitch chat is, is a lifesaver i swear yeah y'all are saving us right now Wait, is it YouTube chat? It's YouTube, man. YouTube chat is actually yeah. the one that said that, yeah. But same time, like, online internet chat is great. Uh, add ammo to dicts, and said then... no one ever. Now I'm freezing. Okay, no, no. So then what we're going to do from here is add ammo to dict, and we're going to say string key, key. and yeah. val. Uh, we're going to say... Bool added equals false... So, so I, I should access this uh, this add ammo to dict on interact, right? In the player, I controller. think so. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. On interact, yeah, yeah, I think so. And then we're just gonna say like ammo dictionary dot add dot try at no dot add. Yeah. Eval. Yeah. Eval. Yeah. Um, we're having a problem with added. Yeah, well, because we need to return. It needs to, yeah. like, something needs to happen with oh, it. Oh, right, right. Yeah. You've declared and you haven't returned yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, like, so, actually, now I'm... So, we'd have to do, like, a triad, and then if add... So, wouldn't we want to do... Uh, triad a thing? Um, yes. I just saw it in the list. Wait, you're you're updating the bool? Yeah, watch this, watch this, watch this. This might oh, work. okay, okay. I see, I see. You're, it'll it'll return oh, true or false if you do a triad. I see. Yeah. I actually have not done this before. So then we can just do a key val here. Oh, not key code. Yeesh. E. Oh, don't you start with me. <laughs> it's just like, you, you, key? Key? I know what key is. <laughs> it's smarter than us, you all. Come on. But this might not be the right turn, return type, though. What does it return? There's no argument that corresponds to required formal key... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh. It's because we have to do triad. Y'all, I am dying here. So we're going to do triad. And inside here, we're going to say new. Like we believe that. in you. There we go. We're here and then for we're just gonna, support. And then we're just going to return added. So wait, wait, wait. Now, because I'm not familiar with this, let, talk me through this. So triad is going to attempt to do this if it does it successfully it will actually do it it's not just testing it right yeah right so because it's triad so if it fails it'll return false yeah. but okay. if it can return it if it can do it it's going to return true okay i guess so it'll return true because it actually did the thing it wasn't just being like yeah i could do that correct eh, and no yeah, yeah no it no. actually does the thing sorry yeah, yeah. so it. it does the thing and if it can do the thing it returns true Excellent. And if it if it does cool. the thing, it returns true. If it cool. can't do the thing and does not do it, it'll return it false. false. Yeah. So now we're hit it. And really, we just we could honestly use the triad function inside of your code itself. We're just kind of wrapping this inside of our own method yeah. to do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is cool. Let's. 
I, I'd love to see, like, Utsav, could you, like, integrate this into the character script? I want to see how this works. Ooh, live coding? Oof, oof, oof. <laughs> do right, it! Me, real hey, quick before I you just forgot how to write a dictionary. Your turn! <laughs> before you do that, though, I'm going to go to our prefabs. Yep. I really hope this is good content, because this is hurting my brain so much. <laughs> All right, we're going to go to Standing McStandinson. It's been we're a long week, y'all. Jump in the prefab editor, and we're going to add our oh. inventory. Right? Okay, so our ammo inventory now yeah, exists. Yeah. It's saved. We're good. Uh -oh. Co Stage is yours. It's off. Okay. Ooh. Okay, let's see how this goes. So, I am going to go open up my player controller. So let's see what I've done and what I need to do. <laughs> I am gonna, I don't need any of these placeholder codes. I'm gonna actually, let's just, let's do that. We'll do private dictionary. Come on, autofill for me. I'm good. I know. Why Look, aren't you auto filling for me? Yeah, yeah, chat. This is and this is like to be fair. Like I do quite a bit of live coding for work, um, but the live coding I do for work is generally something I have already done before and I've practiced and rehearsed it. It's different. Like, it's different when you're figuring this out. Yep. And it, it's a whole thing. By the way, everybody, say what's good to the cat. I feel like anytime a cat pops in chat, we should all just start yelling. It's Pen Pen. What up, Pen Pen? pen. What should I it's name like, this dictionary? Uh, oh yeah, because you're you're getting a reference to it, right? Can yeah. you call it? Can you call it character ammo dict or something so we know it's on the character? And you're blocking you're blocking the mic with your butt. That's I don't want to compete with the mic. So here's the thing: do you need to do you need to make this a new string, a new thing? Yeah, because couldn't it just was... grab it on? Couldn't it just grab it and start and populate it that way? Yeah, that's what I was wondering too. So you're I you think that is the way to go. Yeah, I'm saying just declare it and then we'll literally just drag it over. Like you can just drag it on if you want, or we can do a start get. Yep. I'm gonna delete this. I'm used to coding on Mac and Rider, so my shortcuts oh. aren't working. <laughs> you're on PC yeah. and you're in Visual Studio. I didn't think <laughs> yeah. about that. You're all good, and you're, you're doing good. it across the internet. My man. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Okay, okay. So what's next? I don't need this list. Uh, I'm gonna delete this too. Okay, we'll delete this, and instead, we'll do my dict. What did I name it? Character ammo dict. Ooh, that's a that's a great question from um Skagator. We'll uh we'll cover that in a sec. Well, what was the where is it? Ammo inventory. Pull ammo to add ammo to dict. So no no that's so you need to do get. No, you gotta uh, call that. Get, yeah, get. Uh, so you gotta. You got to get the yeah, component, so get component. Poof. Inventory, uh, right? In uh, ammo, ammo inventory. inventory. Yeah. Ammo inventory, yep. I'm dying there. you go. There. And then you got to do your curl. All... Yep. Yeah. And then character ammo dicks dot get, what is it called? No, no, you got to, so on the ammo inventory, yeah, it, you got to yeah. add a dot, and you've got to do it. Yeah, oh, yes, yes. You've right. got to call the getter uh, after the parens. After, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Dang. And the getter is called get. Uh, no. Isn't it add? Oh, I'm doing no. the getter. Yeah, get yeah, get, yeah, get, yeah. get ammo. There, there you go. go. And then one more set of parens. I'm dying over here. Here we go. And what then what are we error? missing? Cannot implicitly convert to string. Oh, oh uh, int. That's going to be int. Yeah, there yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. There go. Cool. Okay, there we go. Yay. Killing it. Oh, Hell yeah. What's next? Help me out. Because I'm. Right. <laughs> No, no, so no, no. You're doing great. By the way, what I want to explain to everybody, so what you're what you're seeing right now, this is uh, also known as pair programming, uh, mm -hmm. which is a pretty common practice in a lot of companies, and it is a learned skill, and so we're all learning it together. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. we have it. So that's the start, right? So now we need to do your on interact, and on interact. Um, I'm gonna delete this. Hold on one yep. second. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna comment this out. Cool. So I have my character ammo dict. Mm -hmm. Am I adding ammo to it? Yeah. So character ammo dict dot add ammo. Why can't I? Uh. Uh. Capital A because it's a method. Well, no, because he's. Isn't he already in? 
Just, yeah. You just have to parentheses and then put in the. Uh, did I not make words? it a public? Did I not make it a public function? I did. No, it's public. Add, add see, it's already it's already in there, so he doesn't need to. Because didn't he? Uh, could you go back up to your start itself? So he's already in. Oh wait. No, because hey, I just got the dictionary. Right. You're git. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, you're not. You're just git. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it should yeah. be add. Add yeah. object. Yeah. So what am I missing here? Uh, da, da, da. What is our? Yo, what's good, Vietnam? Good to see you here. It's dictionary string. It does not contain a definition for add ammo dict. Accepting a first argument can, could be found. Are you missing what? <gasps> because you're getting a reference to the dictionary, not a reference to the class. That's what's going on here. Oh, yeah, so I actually. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So I, I think so, I know what to do. Yeah, yeah sorry, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, no, no, yeah. go ahead. So we need to make an instance of ammo inventory, not an instance of a dictionary. Yep, that's what yep. I was thinking too. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, oh, hello, Ukraine! Woo. Yo, Ukraine, what's good? Auto fill right, for so me. What do I name it? Tell me a good name. Uh, character ammo inventory? Yeah. Perfect. And now, now we can get. Now we can do this. Uh, character. I still we, need a dictionary, though, right? We still do need a dictionary. Yes. Yep. Sorry. We also yeah, need no, a dictionary. You're good, you're good. Uh, enter. Wow. Oh no! I he's trying die. to make a neutral. He's Switzerlanding it. He's swirling. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't type today. My keyboard's different too because I'm on a different machine. Yep. Just overcoming the obstacles. Yeah. So now we need a dictionary of a uh, string int. Yep. And that one will be character ammo dict. Yep. Ammo dict. And then we'll do. Do we. Oh, I'm going to. Do I want to do a getter on this? Syria! Yeah, so I think what I would do, I think what I, I would just, do here. Yeah. I'm wondering if I should just do. My question is, where do I want to, how do I, how am I getting the inventory? Are we signing that in the. I would do it in the starter. So I would say start. So if you go down to your start method, I would change this character. Well, you could leave the character. Ammo yeah, dict, I'm going to leave. Yeah. But just do a character inventory or a character ammo inventory, whatever we call it. Equals then do the get component of the ammo inventory and just do that and then i think for optimization purposes uh i would delete the get component out of the yeah. character ammo dict and just yeah. do character ammo inventory dot yep so that then we're just using a reference again um so this should do right yep i i'm not hallucinating i i have no. to i have to get a sanity check when i'm doing this will work code. this this should absolutely work okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. i believe so Okay, and then, so then, now we can go down, back down to where we were working. Back on down. And then change character ammo dict to uh, character ammo inventory dot add ammo to dict. There we go. Yep. Okay. So, how am I getting the, the string and int values from the SOs? Am I getting that from the SOs? Yes, that's where it would come from, right? I'm just going to do this so it's not yelling at me. Yeah. So because we don't have that set up right now, why don't we? Yeah. Like exactly what you said, put it in a placeholder. Um, and then. Actually, can you put in like real test values? Just say like, you know, test. Yeah. And then just put in one. Um, and then we should run a debug line so we could actually see whether or not it was. Um, Wait, so this returns so uh, true or false, right? Uh, yes. It does. Okay, so, so here's could, what so I'm going to do. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Do your thing. I'll let you do it. Ah! Sorry. Mm -hmm. Go all the way back. There you go. Yep. Yeah, that's all. Because then it'll right. just it'll debug. Yeah. It'll it'll give us a bool. Now we need to look at this game object. You're getting a complaint there. Is that because you got rid of? Oh, you commented out Vargo, right? Yep. yep. I'm yeah. just gonna comment these two things out. Ah. Oh. Boop boop. 
Perfect. And that okay. way we'll be able to see whether or not it was successful since we're not going to be able to see the dictionary in the inspector. Um, uh, so actually I'm going to keep triggering interact because because if this doesn't show up, then we'll know that uh, uh, what's happening. So should I play it? Let's play it. Also, a great call from Ruffled is triad's not going to do what we want it to do because it's going to add something, but then it's going to return false anytime we try to increment. So we're going to need to have an add ammo to dict. And then when you when you interact with something, you're going to actually have to implement that ammo count. Does that make sense? So wait, so we're, we're going to have an initial value. Are you saying like once it's already there, we need we're going to increment. Yeah, we're going to have to increment that value versus versus adding because we try to add. So if I have if I have pizza with value mm -hmm. of zero and then I mm -hmm. use tr if I use add and I try to throw in another pizza, it's going to return false because it's already got the pizza and it can't add a duplicate key. That's um, fine. I, I think then we just need to add in the functionality that does a check to first increment for the triad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But anyway, let's see if this part of it works, and then we can step yeah. up a little bit more. But yeah, good call, Ruffle. Thank you. Pizzas to throw. Oh, do I have to? Pizzas to throw. I'm oh, because you got rid of the array. Yep. yep. So nothing's going to throw right now. That's okay. Oh, are we going to be able to try this then? Well, yeah, it's going to go into the... He can still pick it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, can I? No, because yeah, I can, I can, I can. Yeah, because right. on interaction right. fires. Yep, yep, you're right, you're right. What is? Wait, am I still missing a reference? Oh my god. This so. comment, yeah. <laughs> uh, did you know in Visual Studio? Oh, that works too. Sorry, <laughs> what can I do in Visual? You Studio? can actually also highlight the whole segment and hit Shift Control forward slash, and it'll comment yeah. the block. Ah, oh, I see. Mm -hmm. I I really like the alt stuff because that's how I learned it seven years ago. I'm an old man. That's fair. <laughs> that's fair. An old man who was almost 10 years younger than me wait why is this not clearing what what am i did i not save it uh maybe not all right we're now we're reloading there we go yeah oh. all right cool Play. i saw the right trigger yep it says it's returning false well there was a true so see true is a true and then a false. Then yeah. false. Yep. Yay. Okay, cool. So this worked. Okay. So what's yep. next? So 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 we have our uh our first ability to actually go in and um like add something to our inventory. Yeah. So do we want to add in the functionality now for checking whether or not the, the key has been added before? Yes, yeah, so I think what we'd want to do is we want to actually write a method that increments a key, mm -hmm. right? And then just so, and then basically say- If the key is already present, then run this method else, right? Yeah, or do we just want to instantiate all of the, do we just want to populate the dictionary when the game starts? Because they're fixed values, we know what they are. Oh, that's So we actually, can literally just have yeah. on start and have it add the four values we want. The, the key values, values right. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, key yeah, yeah. values. Yeah. Well, key values is confusing. The key part of the yeah. dictionary. And what I think yeah. we should do is I think we should have a rep, well, so are we going to have a reference to all the scriptable objects on the controller? Is that where we're going to put those? Because I feel like that, goes outside the scope of the controller because if yeah. it's me yeah i feel like we need to have like an ammo object mm -hmm. so we need to have like an ammo manager or something on the player that basically has all the scriptable objects in it or somewhere that Would basically that not be well shouldn't they shouldn't the, the... the objects that are giving out the pizza and so basically the ammo stations should they not be the ones that have the reference you're right yeah the ammo station should have the reference because they're the ones divvying out the ammo. Yep. Then somewhere we need to create this dictionary with the types. Yeah, which should be in the inventory, and then I, the mm -hmm. controller actually hooks, you know, uses. Yeah, the and then inventory. we just, and then yeah. we're just changing. We're just so the yeah, so the dictionary is actually going to instantiate everything, and then mm -hmm. we're just going to get those values out. We're just going to grab the yep. values. Okay, mm -hmm. so that means we need to go back to our ammo dictionary, our ammo inventory class. Yep. See, this is why. If we all would have gotten together and diagrammed this out earlier, this would be less chatty. But I think this is really good. I'm enjoying yeah. doing yeah. this. So yep, yep. Mm -hmm. it's it kind of shows how you actually work through stuff. Who's writing this? Am I writing this? Uh, you want to interrupt me too, or Joy? Do you want to? Uh, you know what? I I haven't written in a little bit. Let me do it. All right. Cool. Okay. 
So we are writing a new method, yeah? Uh, I think so. Like, cause we don't, we want to, do we want to oh, like- wait, no, we want to, yeah, we want to populate this first, right? Yeah. So I think really okay. just in the start method, right? Do we just add a start yeah. method or? Yep. If you're initializing on start, yeah, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we'll so... basically, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead and uh, speak to me. How do we, how do we want to do this? Yep. So I think we'd want to do, someone asked if we read the chat. Yes, we do. But right now we're being very thinky. So we'll be back to chat in just a second, I promise. But Ruffle is giving us a lot of good advice. And also, uh, that's a language I don't speak. They are also giving us really good advice. So yes. All right. So what I'm thinking is we have our ammo dictionary, right? Which we've already declared as private. So in start, we would just do ammo dictionary dot add. And we would just add the key value pairs we need, right? So we would just add, now do we want to add those abstractly or do we want to put a magic value in there? Well, shouldn't the value be zero and just add the keys? Yes. Yeah, to start with. Yeah. Um, how do we want to add all of these on mass or does it have to just be individual lines? Uh, I think it's individual lines. I think the only other thing to do that would be have like a, like that's why I was thinking, what if we have something with like that contains an array of these scriptable objects so that we could just yeah, do a for right. loop and just say yeah. four, yeah. blah, 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 and yeah. just initiate the inventory, right? And that, that would yeah. be just its own little object that does that for us. Yeah. Maybe the scriptable object, there's a single scriptable object instead of each food type being a scriptable object, which contains a reference to ammo type. And that way we just loop through SO fields and then add all of those to the dictionary. Or is that too much going back? So you're saying time? one scriptable object just yeah, to manage everything? Ammo? Yeah, for all ammos. So basically we'd have a scriptable object with a list. Yes, of ammos. And then we use we, we essentially loop through that. We do a for each on that list through the SO. So we take the we take the um, the reference to the SO, we create an SO object and do a for each on the list. What if we There's... just did a good Oh, I, there's something in my brain that's itching about lists and scriptable objects, and I don't remember the context, but this is making a section of my brain itch, just for reference. This might okay. bite us, but it might not. I've used okay. it before. What if we made a scriptable object of scriptable objects? You can do that. Mm -hmm. And just call it the ammo container. Okay, okay yeah, I like so, that better, actually, yeah. So we're going to create a new scriptable object? Brand new scriptable objects, a new class, new thing, okay. yep. So let me not minimize this i'm learning yeah. over to Unity. yep okay there we go let's go into base sos and we are going to what are we calling this guy so i ammo would call container? this ammo container yep okay let's go in here okay and then there we go and then uh I'm going to be very lazy <laughs> because it's going to be in the same yeah. thing. Yep. And then boop. And then just change this really quickly to create an ammo container, right? Yeah. Beautiful. There we go. Kay. Yay. Okay. And then let's get rid of these guys. Boink. All right. So we are creating a list to hold all of the other ammo scriptable objects, right? Yeah. The list are in a array. It doesn't really matter. Uh, list is just easier. I, I just do yeah. List. I think lists are cleaners. So, Great. um, so it's a, a list, list of oh nope. Ooh, a yeah. nine list. Uh, so this will be a list of uh ammo, right? Of ammo. Yeah, because those are the scriptable objects, right? Yeah. Yep. Cool. Do we want to just uh wait initialize it just here? No, because we can just drag it on. I think we're just okay. gonna just drag and drop oh, this, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, wait, what am I you doing? Yeah, to name oh, it. Name it. Ah, I know. Uh, I joy. And you I don't need the friends either. <laughs> See, you both are still way more experienced than me on live streaming and coding, um, <laughs> but I feel it. What do uh, we want to call this? Uh, Emma list? Simple and descriptive. Yeah. I like it. Yep. And then get rid of the friends. You don't need those. Oh, that's right. Because we're just declaring this. Yes. Um, and should we just make this public or do we need to write a getter and setter? Oh, right. you want me to declare something? Um, protection level? Um, I feel like we just do get private set. Yeah. All get the day. Set. Yeah. Agreed. Okay. Um, so. So, uh, right. 
Yep. And then... Uh, no, no, make it public. It's gonna be public, and then we're gonna oh, do right. get private set. So it's a public get, and then a private set. Okay. Um. Um. Curly uh, mustachios. Mustachios. Mustache. Right and here. Then, and then ah no, come back. And then get semicolon. Private. Private set semicolon. There we go. Boom. And then get rid of the the semicolon at the end. There we go. Boom. I think that's really like all we need. Want to look at it? See if it's pretty. Let's look at it. Let's see what happens. Let's make one. Come back to Unity. Not minimizing Visual Studio. I like some debate. Right. Maybe it should be called Ammo Crate. That. Tag uh, it there. Should be called Rambo. Uh, <laughs> the chopper. We'll call I mean, it the chopper. The, our, our player does throw the pizza pretty quickly. Like that. That's traveling at bullet speed. There we go. Yep. It's a bird. Um, it's a plane. No, it's an ammo container. All right. So now we have this. Yeah. Uh, call it that. Uh, why aren't we seeing? Oh, do you have to? Because we have to. Like why? Are... Oh, because it's a private field. So you have to add serialize. Yep. Eh, 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 eh. I almost alt tabbed. Uh, 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 oh wait. Learn. Where'd Visual Studio go? Oh no, I'm on it. <laughs> Man turns around. Technology. Yay! I mean, I still am absolutely flummoxed that we are in three different cities, thousands of miles apart, and we're remote programming together on my laptop. Like, that is the coolest thing. It is. All right, so just add a... So this won't serialize, someone is saying. Um, but it's it's public, so it... So I yeah. think this is... It's because of the get private issue. set that we're getting an issue with, because then you could set it privately. You could set it publicly if you do that. So can you add serialized field, or do we need to make the ammo container system dot serializable, or do we need to just change this? Or do we just make it public and call it a day because it's a scriptable object? These yeah, are Apple's got it. So hit, wait, hit Control Z. Just add serialized field to it and see if it does it. But it's public. Yeah, but I think Public's because of, I think because of, I think it's just not going to do it for reasons I don't quite understand yet. But Some like, saying properties feels... don't serialize. All right, let's go see what this does. I don't think this is going to do what we think it's going to do. But I'm willing to experiment. I say we're experimenting and learning. I mean, th that's what this stream is about, right? If you're yeah, learning no, Unity, you're probably, you know, having similar yeah. issues, right? And that's what we want to show. So I, oh. I think this is great. What happened? Yeah. I I'm doing it wrong again. Oh, wait. Yeah, no, it's you're right. <laughs> oh yeah, you can just double click. No, that's the container, not the base SO. I got you. Oh, I got you. It. I'm here. No, 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 I'm, my mouse. Okay. <laughs> oh no, you got it. Never mind. But. I don't got it. I, I mean, I do you got, got it. it now. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. So what we're going to so, want to do here is actually just write a getter and setter. Or just honestly, just make it a public list because we're really using this for one purpose. And yeah. it's probably safe to just do this and call yeah. it a day. Yeah. Because there's really no no logic you can put in this. There's no logic in the ammo list. I guess that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Like there's nothing like we're wow. the only ones accessing this list. Um. All right. We're going to break some... Uh, we're going to break some feels, of sneakness. It, it feels dirty. It feels dirty just to have a public, <laughs> but that's okay. We can always go back in and revise this too. The point of the yep. matter is, is that we now have a public list. Yep. Yep. So, so now we just need to add our our stuff. Ka chow. Hey, ka chow. Ka chow. Is your numlock on? Okay. okay. <laughs> no, it, it's fine. It's just I like, couldn't highlight things. Hot dog ammo. Pie ammo. Pizza ammo, pizza slice ammo. Oh wait, sandwich ammo. Use... Oh wait, we don't we're not actually use using... the pizza slice ammo. Put taco in its place. Yeah, taco. Boom. Goodbye. But then, how are we gonna deal with pizza slice? I guess that's a question for later. Yeah, it's yeah, a question. That's, for... that's, that's future, future us. us's problems. <laughs> <laughs> Told you, mind linked. All right, well, so we've okay, got. We're doing good. Yeah, yeah. So we've got our ammo list. And we have our ammo container. Yep. Okay. So now we need to reference the ammo container inside of our character inventory. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Aww. So our ammo. So now we're going to need a reference to that. Okay. All right. So, uh, um, what oh, is yeah. it called? Emma. Pavel made a comment which says you can serialize the class itself. Now, for next time, instead of doing public, we could try serializing the class. Yep. That would make a lot of sense, actually. Yeah. Because do we want to change that? If you want to. 
Uh, but I think we can just continue if if, if okay. If I mean, we can off stream. We can also go in and clean this up a little yeah. bit. I was uh, reading chat and now listening, so I'll go with whatever you two say. <laughs> All right, so uh, we're uh, doing an ammo container, right? Right, and just call it ammo container. Yeah. Okay. And then and you then... Ser you serialize the field, right, so that we can oh, draggy no, droppy. I will, cool. I will do that now. There we go. And now we have to initialize the dictionary using the ammo container, right? Uh, not serialize, yep. initialize the dictionary using the yep. ammo container. Over here in start? Yeah, in start, Great. yeah. There we go. We'll need a for loop. Yeah. Could we do a for each? Yeah, just say for each for yeah. each uh, item in. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember what we're doing now. <laughs> Okay. How did you wait? 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 What did you just push to make that happen? That's auto. That that, that auto. Yeah. That's that's how it works. Come on. Yeah, dude. Oh, dude, dude, dude. Okay. No, no, no. Check this out. This is great. Okay, <laughs> hold on. So, if you're like, I want to do a thing, you type in four, and they're like, No, I want to do four each, and then you go tab tab. Yep. And then Visual Studio is like, I got you, fam. Yep. Yep. Ryder does that too. Today you learned. Y'all seven years. <laughs> seven years. I didn't know that. <laughs> That's it's wild. Been 80 years. Tab tab. Ammo. It's tab. been 10,000 years. All right, cool. So, var item in ammo uh, container. Uh, um, hold on. Oh, yeah, ammo container dot, and you need to get the, the list. Oh. Uh, ammo, ammo list. Ammo list. Yeah. There we go. Okay, so for each item, and then we're going to go uh, ammo dictionary. Dot add item dot key, right? No. Yes. How, what yeah. what does the ammo list have? No, just item. Just it add item. A, yeah, it's just item. It's just item. Uh, okay. Or do you have to do item dot key item dot value? Wait, no, 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 no. no, no. no. Oh, no. wait, wait, wait. Item dot name. Oh, what do it's we call the it? thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, item yeah, dot yeah, name. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. <laughs> we're doing it. <laughs> it's um, we're doing it, Peter. Uh, <laughs> is it food <laughs> type? Ammo dot food type. Uh, ammo dot food type. Okay, hold on. But item. food type is a item, not a string. And we shouldn't be using. So we got to use this. We got to use a key value pair of a string and an int. Okay, hold on. Uh, you oh, can do a dot wait, to a string. Oh. Yeah. Or, okay. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 no. Go. I think I know what to do. Can I try it? Yeah, yeah, do it. I, I, Take over. Words are leaving me, but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think my fingers can do this. All right. Can we do that? Oh, that that I don't know if we can do that. But why can't can't we just convert uh, an? Because can't we set it to an int? We could just two string it. it. Yeah. But over in the um, inventory, so like, can't you just do food type dot type dot two string? Is that? It? I think you she can just said do food... making stuff up. <laughs> I think you can just do food type dot two string. Can't you? Yeah, can't we'd have to do we'd have to do the dot hot dog dot two string right no because uh, it's uh on line 10 it's yes. the food type it's the defined food type so oh, the, yeah ammo yeah. list already has the enum right yep okay yep. i'm giving code back to joy joy you're in charge again okay man okay uh <laughs> brain okay so, so food add item, item dot, dot food type oh but it doesn't know why doesn't it know food type because ammo list, we're, we're talking about the ammo list right now, and the ammo we're talking about oh, the items have, in the okay. ammo list. Dude, guys, we gotta go deeper. Um, so for each item, okay, hold on. So for each item in ammo list, so over here in our ammo container, we have this list of ammo, mm -hmm. and then over here in in Unity, <laughs> follow me now. Um, over here in our ammo container, we have hotdog.ammo so in hotdog.ammo is the food type so we need to go in a level deeper right so you'll do a for each uh, uh, again with the item and then uh wait the item is the collection right i don't think we do go back to go back to the scriptable objects go back to ammo mm -hmm. one more over mm -hmm. Because ammo is our scriptable object and we have a food type, is it just because it's private and we have no way to get access? We don't have accessors. 
Oh, oh, remember how at the beginning of the stream we were going to be like, let's get some Chat got that. Together. Thanks, chat. Jihad got us. Yay! Chat Twitch GPT. Actually, this was YouTube GPT. Yeah, yeah, so we just don't have accessors, so now we need to do that. Okay, um, yeah. Uh, should we just do it within line? Somebody was saying we could use the li the light bulb to do this. Light bulb? But I don't see oh. a light bulb. You can try. What is what like, is the... it'll auto complete accessor sometimes for you, but yeah. Light bulb. Uh, right side on the right side. I thought that was a paintbrush. Yeah, it is a paintbrush. Sometimes it shows up Did... as light bulb if you're trying to invert or something. But that's not giving us what we want. It's telling us we can encapsulate. If we yeah. encapsulate it, will it do it? Let's oh, see. Wait. Yep. Boom. Am I doing it? Or are you doing it, Joy? Oh, somebody I, hit I enter on that paintbrush. So who is doing this? I am. I'm, I'm on it. I'm on oh, it. Oh, you do it. <laughs> oh, it's it's doing it down Ooh, below. At the uh, bottom. Wait, why is it food type one, food type two? Also, why is it down there? Why not just do it in line? I don't like it at all. I don't like what it did. It okay. broke us, no, Peter. Oh, do it by hand. I'm controls some... it. Okay, driver, go. Do it. Who's the? Am I the driver? You're. It's up. Get us. What am I doing? Am car. I doing a getter setter? Yeah, yeah, just uh, um, a a public get. Um, yeah, so it's got to be a public field type then. Yeah. Here, right. And then we're not going to be able to serialize it, which doesn't matter. Okay, so oh, no, tell me what I'm writing. writing. No, so public does matter because yeah, we're public? declaring the... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, it does matter <sighs> that we can... It needs to be serialized because we select that in... The inspector and then that's what i'm doing because we don't declare the food type right in here because it's a this is just the the ammo scriptable object so we need to be able to f set that up in the inspector yeah, yeah 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 you're right but why are we getting a weird area here property type ammo dot food isn't... type is less accessible than property type ammo dot food type yeah because the uh, because the enum is, is, private. is private so should i make the mm -hmm. enum public too yeah Oh my god, we shouldn't be doing public. This kills me. Whew. Okay. Okay, Joy, I think back to you because I think try try the list now and see if that does the work. Something is I permit. My I brain. thought you were going to hit me with a somebody once told me and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> really? That's it. We are entering the Shrek phase of the stream. The Shrek window is hit. Um <laughs> Okay, so item dot um, food type uh, to string. Boink. Comma. Um, comma. Oh, zero. Are we just going to do zero? Yeah, because we're just doing a default initialization zero for everything. Yep. Yep. Okay, and then... I think this is it, right? You don't need anything else. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Well, are we going to we can't see the dictionary in the inspector so we should have something that tells us whether or not this worked yeah should we, we just, just run a debug a, throw a quick dirty debug and yeah. then we can <laughs> okay and um, then this is just so well never mind could we do a for each through the dictionary well no never mind never mind never mind i was saying we should well, print we everything that was added yeah, yeah, yeah you know what let's just do this let's just do it in here Ooh. Um, and then you want to run a cool C sharp shortcut I learned the other day? Do it. Dollar sign. I'll, I'll walk you through it. Ooh. Dollar sign. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. Now quotations. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now type your message. So be like, like let's say, like, um, added, and then do a space, and then do mustachios. Ooh. Item dot food type. Ah. Uh-huh. And then so outside the mustachios. The... Uh-huh. Do a space. Do I need to add the two stringer? No, I get okay. Nope. Uh, and then just do a the space and then like to the link. Uh to the to the link, to the dict. <laughs> Sorry. Um to the... oh 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 to, I to the, to the dictionary, yeah. To the, yeah, to the dictionary. <laughs> this reminds yeah, 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 yeah. me of C. To the this is how you do C and then do a yeah, do your close do your thing. So that'll okay. print that statement for us now. All right, okay. let's see. Let's, Moment of truth. Let's... I'm scared, you guys. I know, me too. Okay. 
Um, is all of our stuff? The, yeah, does the player have the inventory? You added that, right? I added that. Does the ammo list have all this stuff in it? Yes. And do we have a Wait. reference to the ammo list on the player inventory? Let's find out the players. Where's Danny McStannon? <laughs> okay, there. Nope. His ammo inventory is up higher, and we don't have an ammo list there. If you look, well, guess what? We're gonna put one in there. Mom. What? All right. Okay. I'm scared. I'm scared. Are Moment we gonna hit truth. play? Y'all, there's a a beautiful rainstorm bolt. Well, hot dog got added to the list. Oh wait. Are we trying to? I heard only hot dog. So oh, only hot, hot dog, dog goes the in. Issue. And then it's trying to add it again. Wait, hold on. Let me make sure that I didn't accidentally actually put in two hot dogs. Yeah, because it says <laughs> me hot every dog time I cook just... lunch. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, so why is it doing a double loop? Is one of the scriptable objects set to hot dog? So like, look at hot dog ammo. Buy ammo. Pizza bomb, pizza slice, sandwich. Oh, we can't see the types. Yeah. No, they're right here. Oh, no, they're no, gone. The, the they're enum's gone. not there. Right, yeah. right, because they're it's private now. Mm -hmm. or not, so we need to. F it, it's serial. It's, it's the words that make it hard to impossible yeah. to see. So we yep. go back to ammo. So go back to it now. Go back to our ammo class. Um, we have to see this. We have this to see the it. only place that we add it. Yeah. Yep. So what if we just write a little like get food type function or okay. Wait. So back to back to what the chat was saying. I'm going to take over for a second because I think Chad yes. gave us an idea on this. Go for it. Um, all right. I'm going to try this. I'm going to try this, but still use field. What the? <laughs> you listen here. Uh, the bull is saying that, or asking, is the two string returning food type instead of the name of the food type? Uh, that is a question. But I mean, could we just create a dictionary with enum rather than string? Yeah, but we were talking about that earlier, how that wasn't a good idea, yeah. because then you could have yeah. like issues there. Yeah. Oh, continue forward with what you were thinking. Yeah. About. Well, yeah, what I was it, doing yeah. wasn't doing the thing I, I, I was thinking. Yeah. Why don't we just do like if we want to keep this private but serialized, right? So what if we do something like to match Joy's coding? Oh, why don't we just make another? Yeah. Yeah. I'm just going to go like, let's just do this. Yeah. Get good type. Yeah. Better get yep. good type. Get good type. Oh my goodness. <laughs> get good type. And you know okay. what? I'm gonna get even. This is it. Yep. Yeah, I think this is the answer. And now we'll see that we have hopefully serialized. Uh, lost myself. You need to update that in the. Um... Why is Standy off? Do we we want Standy. No, on? no, no. We I, have, I turned we have that two off. Standies. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, we I have two Standies. All right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 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 uh. What the? Well, the function won't show up in the inspector. Why won't the enum show up either, though? Oh, wait, 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 wait. The uh, enum. I... Okay. Hi. Oh, wait, no, they're still gone. That's sorry. Brain, yeah. Uh, yeah. go back to the, I think, hold on. Oops. We didn't finish. Yeah. You're driving. I, I guess I am. <laughs> Okay, so let's go back here, and we... Go We're missing start. something, like, super basic. Because it was bothering... Oh. oh, so that has to be public now? Why? What are we doing? What have we done? Oh my... Hold on. I think I just figured it out. I think someone in chat just gave me the clue. You're numb, lock.
I really think this might be the answer. And now I'm just like going to laugh yeah. at myself for a second if that's the case. Maybe that's not the case. Oh, yeah, I can't alt tab here. That is the weirdest part is I keep wanting to alt tab inside of this, but I can't because we are in Parsec. Yep. Where are we lost at here? What if okay, we just made serializing a public? Please make private. Yeah, private yeah, yeah. Well, but it's still not fixing our problem, so it doesn't matter. Oh, right. So wait, was... why? We're there's something going on with like fields and properties here that we're messing up, and I yeah. am my brain is hurting too much to like make that work right now. Okay, that's fair. So, do we want to mark this as an area that we need to work on off stream, and then uh, come back when we have our solution? Hold on. Chad is saying we're doing it right now. Move the enum outside the class. That's what I was thinking. What if we just move the enum outside the class and then declare the enum? Try it. But. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking here. Yeah. And then we wait for everything to resave, or did I just break something I know again? This is due to its ammo food type is inaccessible due to its protection level. Because it's oh, right. yeah. All right, we've hit that spiral. So yep, we'll get right. this right. We I think it. To... I, I think it. I think this is something we may want to. Wanna, yeah, we'll we'll take this yeah. off and just fix it. It's gonna be one of those things where we've been coding so long that we're our brains are now melting and we're trying to live code. So yeah, we are and going to Friday. go and it's Friday, mm -hmm. so we're gonna go right ahead. But we have an idea of how our dictionary works and how things tie together. Mm -hmm. Um, I think we're in a place where we can kind of look at this, and then all we have to do to fix that uh, error that we're seeing there, of course, is uh. Like this. We can get rid of to string. Oh yeah, why don't you just return the string in the? Yeah, we could honestly. There we go. Yeah, actually, you, yeah, you, yeah. It's fine. Whatever. whatever. All right. So now we got we'll rid of that up. error. Everything's good here. It'll clean up, and we're back to life. Ah, what a beautiful day it is for coding. <laughs> <laughs> Aha! We fixed it. Yay! All right. Okay. Press so play. we're all good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So now we push play to see if what our error is. Ooh. Damn. All right. So do we have our error? Oh, we don't have errors. We, we have, have a list. Look, <laughs> we added the pizza. We added the taco. We added the sandwich. We added that. We're all good. Everything's working. Yo, we did it. We did it. Yay. I don't know how we did it. Oof. Much like <laughs> a lot of things in my uh, life. I, I will have to we say it, it, it was YouTube GPT and Twitch GPT. That's YouTube how and we Twitch did GPT it. got us through yep. this. Yep. Uh... We are just the, the 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 holders of the fingers to type the yep. things that the chat tells to do and they fix it for us. Thank you, Chad. Thank you, Chad. Yeah. Yep. 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 <laughs> Denise nailed it. Food type is the enum itself, not your field. Anyway, now we have the get. Everything's good. We're back in life. Everyone's living. And just looking through this now, we can see that this is a hot dog, a pie, a pizza. Huh. Pizza slice is set to hot dog. So we got to oh, fix oh, that. Uh, that's probably what, you know, no, what's happening we're not, before. Because pizza slice wasn't in the list, though. Uh, no. Sandwich and then taco. So we're good now. Everything is good. Yes. All right. Yay! So now we have a list. And if we want... We can try to fill up this list. We can try to start incrementing and decrementing. Or we can wrap the show. We've been going an hour and a half. Uh, we can wrap the show and kind of get ready for next time. Whatever you all want to do. Yeah, I, might, I so, think it might. Sorry, go ahead, Joy. No, 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 no. No, 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 go for it. No, no, <laughs> no, you, no, you. <laughs> uh, I was just going to say, if we wanted to wrap up, didn't we have one other piece of cool thing that we wanted to announce here? We do have a couple cool things. And we still need to talk about the net code ideas. So. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah we should we should switch. We should uh, context switch here yep. and talk about the other stuff that we got going on because we got some exciting things happening. Okay. So, so now that we got through that? this, now that we struggle through this part after our brains melted midstream, let's <laughs> tackle in and let's jump to some other stuff. So a couple of things. So I believe he's hanging out in the chat. But the first thing I want to talk about is we had some conversations, got a little bit of help, and now we have a gameplay loop. Uh, we have some music that we can put into the game. And this is just a draft. Uh, I do have permission from the composer to share this, so do not worry. Um, let me just get this set up to play. 
and uh, we'll cut over and let you listen. So this is going to be our gameplay music. Here we go. And I've got it on loop. Oh, I forgot to F11 this. F11 that, yo. This is done by Hemi. I'm not sure if you're in the chat, man, but uh, if you are, drop a tag. Oh, there he is. Yeah, you already said oh, yeah. it. So this is my favorite part right here. This is my favorite part. You ready? Right after this break. Oh, maybe there's one more break. Do, do, do. It's got some of that like. Kind of some classic punk vibes a little bit. It's just kind of a nice grind. Got a little theremin. Oh, here it comes. Got some layers. So yeah, I'm just really stoked about this. I think it's super good. So uh, that's what we've got going on in the background. Oh, I'm not in sync with the stream version. That actually makes sense because I'm sending this audio to our production person literally on the other side of North America for me <laughs> and then I'm singing along but yeah there's a lot of a there's lot of stream inception there. going on so yeah this is the demo that we're working on and there's going to be more we're going to get more layers to it uh, Hemi has a little bit of time to dive into this thing but uh, he does good work and I'm super stoked to uh, love this also one thing I want to call out for the chat too, like, thank you everybody for being so dope about talking to each other about like programming standards and yep. ideas and why we do things the way we do. Um, that's been my favorite part of the stream is seeing like y'all teach each other and talk to each other and then also correct us, uh, you know, yeah. when we're just brain melting. So it's yeah. been really cool. Um, yeah. All right, how do I get out of this and close this? So that is uh, the music that we're hoping to put in. And um, another fun thing is that uh, our producer and one of our mods are collaborating to make our menu music so we're gonna wait for that to come through in the next few weeks um but it's gonna be cool uh someone's saying was this game suggested by chat gpt uh, no <laughs> we actually crowdsourced it uh the first yep. episode and then we actually i actually used chat gpt to generate a game design doc which we're gonna compare our output to at the end is kind of a fun thing but yeah we're uh we're having a good time yeah. um having a good time Honestly, I feel mm. like I'm learning Unity all over again because I've had a brain freeze for the last year or so. I've been doing so many other things and this really feels like kind of a relearning moment and, and I'm yeah. really, really grateful to chat GPT. Chat, chat, <laughs> and, or and YouTube, I, and, and, YouTube and, I, and Twitch what about GPT? Us? I, I, I mean Twitch chat and YouTube chat GPT. Yeah, yeah, yeah that yeah. chat. Um, Okay, so there's that. So should we briefly talk netcode? Yeah. Um, so real quick to close that? Yeah. just real quick, just wrap it up. So everybody, we were talking and, you know, hey, we wanted to do netcode using, of course, netcode for game objects, which is built, uh, which is a Unity thing you can add to the package manager. So I spent a good chunk of my week after I did like the wave manager setup, uh, which we still have not even integrated into the game manager, but we'll get to that. Um, you know... So what we're looking at here is the netcode research in our TDD. So basically we need to decide which of our objects are going to be synced by the server and which are synced by the client. And then we're gonna need to develop some kind of graph to do that. Now, the good news is, is netcode for game objects has a lot of really, really good things you can access. Um, for example, you can access um, the singleton instance of the network manager and actually find out, am I the client, am I the host? And there's also an is owner variable that, or field that just basically says like, yo, am I the owner or not? Uh, and if you're not the owner, then you don't do stuff, right? So like with the player controller, uh, we can just basically say is owner. Um, and then from there we can dive from in there and do all the movement code, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, the thing we need to discuss, and let me show you what I mean by this. So I made a little network diagram. It's basic, but, and I used a, I, I used a Jamboard again, because that's everyone's favorite. Um, <laughs> so we have our host side and we have our client side. So anything that spawns has to exist on the host side of things. The host has to do the spawning, right? So my thoughts are what will have happen is the first person to join the session uh will be identified as host 
Right. And then the second person to join will be identified as the client, right? Right. So the host will spawn the enemies. It'll manage their position. It will manage their navigation. It will also manage their state. Um, anything you do with physics all so has to be um, server authoritative. And what that means is that the server, the thing handling the communication has to make the decisions on how this works. Mm -hmm. And so what that means is that our host, who is the server, because you're doing a client host connection, we're not going to put a server in the middle and everyone connect because that adds another layer of stuff that I just don't know how to do. Um, I'm sure it's not terribly hard, but for the scope of this, it's outside. Scope check moment. Go. Scope check yeah. moment. Putting in our own managed server is not what I want to do. So we'll just have, you know, the first person to join will be the host. So that means the host player is also going to have to manage where the ammo spawns when we shoot it. Um, now the ammo is going to be pooled, but it's going to have to set its position and move it. Well, it's going to have to reflect the position. Um, when it collides, it's going to have to send an event over to the client to let it know it hit something and that an enemy was hit. Um, and then the other part is the client side of things. So the client's got to do all the moving, but we're using physics to move right now. And again, physics has to be server authoritative, which means when the client moves, they're going to have to tell the server, yo, I'm moving here and I'm getting this changed. And then the server says bet and sends it back. And then we start moving is kind of how this is going to work. Now we can totally do that or we can make it a little easier on ourselves and we can just move the transforms of the client. And then the client will just sync its transform data to the server. That's the decision we need to make. Uh, someone's saying P2P, essentially, yeah, we're using a P2P type solution for this vertical slice. Mm -hmm. um, now, when we had this discussion before, we were talking about the merits of each uh, movement type for the characters. But uh, one of the things that we brought up was the fact that we're still going to be having to do this for the enemies, right? And right. the other things. So it's really kind of six and one with the direction that we go with the player. And I think our discussion was kind of experimenting with both and see which just feels the best. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and I think, you know, I, I haven't done Netcode before, so I'm kind of inclined to try it with the client, uh, you know, client and server RPC calls and, and see how that goes. And, and yep. my thinking was if it doesn't work out or if I'm running into trouble, I just go back to doing, you know, just vector transformations, uh, trans, uh, vector fair. transformations for, for player. Yep. And I think that's actually worth letting everybody know. Um, I can't, I'd have to do some branch switching. I can show you kind of where we're at with net code, but that's a good thing that um, it's I've brought up. So we're going to have to deal with um, re remote procedural, re remote procedure calls, RPC calls, right? And again, uh, net code for game objects has access to client RPCs and uh, server RPCs. Um, and so basically what we're going to have to figure out from there is in syncing, what will happen is like in itself's move, it'll be like, hey, I'm going to move, pool, send the server RPC data to give me all the information for the rigid body. Great. Sync the transform back. So the host is going to be like, cool, this rigid, bo rigid, rigid, this Richard body, this rigid body <laughs> has a velocity of whatever. And because of that, this is where the transformer is going to be. And then the client's going to be like, okay, cool. Blah, 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 blah. And it'll kind of work through. So the other thing I want to add uh, before we close out is we are doing that code in the wrong order. <laughs> um, and I've been thinking about it all week, and I actually think for the purpose of what we're trying to do here, it's good to do it this way. Um, mm -hmm. And so I talked to uh, Esteban. He's one of our um, advocates. He's doing a lot of netcode work as well as Antonio Forster. And um, basically the conversation was you should be architecting your netcode and your gameplay hand in hand from the jump. And it's absolutely right after looking into this. But what I think will be really interesting, why don't we convert it? because now you're gonna see how we convert right. things and think differently. And it was a right. really good exercise for me this week to like think through how we have to interact differently. And so I think that'll be nice. Um, full disclosure, that will not be like the live coding session you saw today <laughs> where we're like thinking through it. Uh, it's gonna be prepped, but yeah. it's gonna be awesome. I'm really excited to get it. And I think it still fits within our scope. Um, Pizza Kaladis and Richard Bodies coming to a <laughs> unity near you. Um, Alternative universe unity. <laughs> yep. And uh, then uh, the last thing I want to say, somebody's saying, you know, I hope this is getting archived. It absolutely is. So this stream is going to exist in the YouTube VODs, in the Twitch VODs. I am also embedding every one of these episodes on Unity Learn so that it lives on Unity Learn and you can use it as part of your learning experience. Um, okay. 
My brain hurts. We barely got an enum to work today. Uh, what else? What else do we need to do before we wrap the stream up? You didn't need to go burr. Uh -huh. Hey, hey, long, long week, long week. But I think what yeah. we should do before we close out is kind of decide on next steps again for the week, yeah, and then what are we going to come back with, right? I agree. Yeah. Let me. So I do not have access to the editable document because I was using the published document. So let me just pop up a quick notepad here and uh, to do for next week um for me i'm gonna get the lists in the controller make sure all of those interactions are are basically flushed out so that now that we have the so's in list i can flush that whole thing out okay and i can do more too but we'll wait i for think that's a good amount yeah. um i want to go through and just make sure that everything is cleaned up with um as far as like code accessibility goes that's just like a, a little side okay. sweep that i want to do but as for the actual task what do you guys think that it, uh what else do we need to be doing this week we need to be able to increment and decrement the dictionary oh. yeah 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 and then um also should probably have stands for all of these different pieces i can do that okay so i'll make it so you can go to uh the pizza stand and actually get some pizza and the the okay. hot dog stand Oh, uh, another thing we can do is uh, have enemies take damage. Oh yeah. Ooh, Thomas, you wanna you wanna get damageable? Let's do it, Thomas. I will make enemies take make make it so enemies can take damage. Uh, I'm also going to integrate the wave manager into the game manager, so that we can have some kind of a wave system happening, so that it will trigger through. All right, so we'll do that for next time. Sorry, I'm, I just realized I'm typing in like a super tiny text pad that nobody can probably read. So let's just bump that up a little bit. Uh, so yeah, so to do for next week, we're going to... So it's up, you're going to add the list controller, make sure the interactions are all flushed out so that you'll uh, when the interaction happens, does that mean you will just be... Let's be clear. So Joy, you're going to write the increment and decrement functions for the dictionary yep. and it's up, you're going to call those functions then. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. great. And then I'm going to make sure the enemies can take damage when they hit with a pizza or a food. Um, I will probably try to get the pizza interaction all laid out. Somebody mentioned in the chat they'd be interested to see how we handle the pizza rocket situation. So maybe I'll prepare and we can do it yeah. live on stream. Yeah. The only yeah. downside is yeah. I won't be able to screen share next week. Um, I will be at a remote location with limited bandwidth, but I will be here. So a top secret location, top secret location can't in talk the hills about of it. state. Okay. This is where you find out that, uh, that Thomas is actually a, a secret agent man. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we've done all the things. I hope you all had an amazing time. I had a blast. This stream is literally the highlight of my week. Joy, it's up. thank yeah. you so much. Um, you can follow like us on the social medias. Uh, me on Twitter, Joy on Instagram. It's up on Twitter and Instagram. So you got what? The Joy of Game Dev on Instagram. You got Thomas Winkley yep. on Twitter. You got It's up Jamal on Twitter. And um, I'm also on Instagram. My Instagram presence is weak at best. I basically just yeah. reshare everything Joy posts. So <laughs> yeah, join me for the fun. I'm making a lot of memes for this. Uh, for, for this and, and a big shout out to Joy's last Instagram post. That is it was actual so fire, you guys. You got to check it out. That's actual okay, fire. I guess I'll, I don't know how to link to Instagram. <laughs> All right, hold on. Else. There's one thing I forgot to share while we do that. Um, we launched an educator podcast on Monday. So if you are oh, an yeah. educator and you teach game development, uh, this launched on Monday. I'm dropping the link right here. Uh, here's links to everything. Uh, so yeah, you can subscribe to that. It's on iTunes, Google Play, uh, Spotify. And you can just Spotify? listen to the website. It is on Spotify. It's up now. I shared a link in the Discord. So uh, that's there if you want to check it out. We're going to release it every two weeks. Our next episode is going to be on VR in the Classroom, featuring Antonia Forster, VR with Andrew, and some of our educator ambassadors. Uh, that's my Twitter. That's uh, twitter.com. It's, uh, it's off Twitter. And then we just see Joy's uh, Instagram. But yeah, again. I shot web. <laughs> um, I have no idea how to share Instagram. Just look for, isn't it at the joy of game dev yeah. on Insta is what you're looking yep. for. Yep. Yep. It won't let me, there we go. That's what you're looking for. Um, okay. I think we can wrap the show again. Huge thank you to Hemi. 
Uh, we'll do more reviews like this next week. We'll try to write some more code, dive in. Uh, let us know if you thought this was a good balance of code versus review. I thought we went a little more code heavy, which I kind of enjoyed. Yeah, I did. But also, um, I'd like to know if you'd like for us to be better prepared or do you like the chatty part of it? Because if we were better prepared, we probably wouldn't have so many brain freezes. Yeah, right. Yeah. So whichever you guys prefer. Um, what we went through today, though, I think is a really great uh, example of what it is like to program in general like obviously like we uh get a little bit brain freezy because yeah. we're live but i think that's very representational of what it's yeah. like when you're first getting started so if you feel like that if you're looking at the stream and be like yeah. that's me super valid it's yeah. us every day that's that's why literally i go for walks through my neighborhood sometimes yeah um see some grass touch some grass okay yep. we've been ending for 20 minutes let's wrap <laughs> this thing up it's been a it's been a pleasure it's been wonderful thank you all so much we'll see you next week and uh we're gonna raid you off to another amazing developer i'm not sure who yet so stick with the raid and tell them what's good from the unity crew uh we'll see y'all have a wonderful weekend be safe have a good week bye, bye.